Here is um, a piece of tissue that's kind of fragmented. And if you look here, you can see there's a lot of uh, scale and uh, keratin debris on top and ulceration. The dermis is completely filled with infiltrate, All right? And if we look closer at that, it's a whole mixture of cells, neutrophils, histiocytes, all sorts. And I can't go in any closer on this one, but you can see, I think, oh wait, here we go. These round structures here, these are a large, round, uniform yeast. Here's some more, see the little circles? You can see them because they have thick cell walls. I think there's another place over here that is a little bit better. You can see them kind of floating in the background. And what you'll see is a large yeast here, and here's another large yeast right here. They're budding, so you have these broad base budding. They're big, round balls of yeast. They look relatively uniform in size, and then they'll have buds coming off. So instead of a tiny little narrow base bud, they have these big buds. So that's classic for what? Yeah, yeah blasto, blastomycosis. And they, again, they're, they're much larger than a lot of the other yeast, and they're very uniform in size. And you do tend to get a mixture of neutrophils and histiocytes. So anytime you see granulomatous dermatitis with neutrophils, always think of infection until proven otherwise. Or if you see granulomatous dermatitis with plasma cells, you often have infectious etiology. And again, until you've ruled that out, always keep that in mind. Plasma cells are a nice clue. And oh, this piece is upside down. Now I've turned, moved over here. But the presence of epidermal hyperplasia, that pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia pattern with neutrophils, with granulomas, also really strongly makes you think, think of deep fungal infections among other types of infectious things. So that's blastomycosis. And obviously to be sure about any fungal infection, cultures are important or other modalities. Uh, yeast a lot of times can be classified pretty precisely in, in most cases from the H&E uh, or the PAS and GMS by their morphology. Uh, hyphal fungal infections are totally different though. All of the rules that we use to diagnose aspergillus or fusarium or mucor are not reliable on tissue sections. And I've, I've been taught that rule and I tried to break that rule before and was proven wrong. So by culture. So anyway, I always uh, have to talk the, talk the clinicians down from that and say, well, we can't tell you for sure. We can say whether it's septate or not, but sometimes treatment alters the way those hyphae look. We'll talk about that in a second.